Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, how familiar are you with the supernatural? <laughs> what does that mean? Well, if you're a regular listener to these shows, you know that we, we deal with a lot of esoteric and spiritual subject matters. And to enhance that is a producer of a wonderful new film that will be coming out called The Exorcist. And I, I watched the film with great pleasure. I think you will too. So we want to speak with the, uh, the producer, one of the producers of this film, um, Yoichi Utebe, U Utebe, did I pronounce Utebe, it? Utebe, yes, the that's correct. Right? Okay, yes. thank, thank you. you. Welcome so to Jenny. Thank you for having me on the show. Thank you, Peter. Thank you. So this is a very unusual film, and I, I loved mm -hmm. so much of it because it, it's, let's call it, right up my alley. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure it is. <laughs> and, right. And, um, and it's, it takes place in Japan. It's yes. actually a beautiful film of Japan. It, it's, mm -hmm. it's city life in Tokyo, but it's the mannerisms, it's the style of life. It's beautiful, and it's the way people, you know, carry themselves. And and um, I, I love that culture. So mm -hmm. it was beautiful to watch this film. And on top of that. It covered subject matter that um, is really uh, beautiful to 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 hear and watch. The story has so much drama in it and mm -hmm. and uh, revelation. That's called. So um, looks like your screen froze for a second. So I um, maybe I froze on your screen. Um, we'll edit this part of it. So when you come back, we'll get to talk some more. You're back now. You oh, yes, I'm back. So hopefully you freeze again. I don't know whether it was me or you. Yeah, but anyway, uh, so mm -hmm. we're back. We lost about 30 seconds there. Yep. So, um, but we can edit this. Part. So, um, so I'm very excited about this uh, journey uh, in the film of learning about the, the heroine, the, the, the uh, woman who is this great psychic, great mm -hmm. clairvoyant. Yes. And, um, and she has great powers. And, and yet, to many of us who know the subject matter, it's very realistic. Uh, mm -hmm. in, in the universe that we're familiar yes. with. Yes, yes. So, um, you know, I, I, I know that we were talking before we started the show, mm -hmm. and, and you have always been very interested in the subject matter. Yes, yes. So, you know, when I was a, I was a kid, you know, I was actually raised in uh, Lebanon, Beirut. So it was a kind of interesting place for me to be, you know, raised. Also, I was uh, raised as a very uh, pure Christian family, which... Oh, we lost you again. Um, so, we have an unstable connection. All right, I, I, I just got out of another hmm. um, program and um, just want to make sure um, okay all right um, so I just reduced what my oh the bandwidth All right yeah, but I don't know that you know that's a full mm -hmm. engine, but anyway. Mm -hmm. So you um, you were raised in Christianity. Yes, Christian family, and also a very unusual environment like Lebanon, Beirut. And I experienced, uh, you know, the war. What I actually experienced it when I was young. So I don't know. From younger age, I I always had this like wonders of you know 
why are we here type of, of, of uh, thinking uh, as, I, as a young child. So uh, I was always in touch with this kind of environment. I, when I go, when I look back to it now, I realize when I was a kid, of course, you don't notice it. But if you go back to it, you know, reflect yourself and you realize, I think the environment kind of put me into that kind of, you know, a situation. And I was also raised in U.S. for about 10 years. So I have a lot of uh, uh, different culture mix, you know, within myself. I was actually in New York. So New York is like a melting pot of the world. So me meeting all these different people, different way of thinking, it kind of makes you you know, think little, little more than just uh, ordinary things in, in the daily life. And, and one day I met this book called The Laws of the Sun. It was written by the guy named Ryuho Okawa, 1987, right after I graduated high school. And that's when I, I just felt like I knew this book. I don't know, like, I never read it, but I feel like I it's read it. You know, I'm sure everybody has this kind of experience once or twice in your life. And that was one of the biggest, biggest one I ever had. So that gave me so much impact. So I started reading about his, you know, teachings and what he's saying. And since then, it's been um, over 30 years. So I've always been enjoying this kind of, in this field. So. And then you were introduced to the screenplay, right? Oh, yes, yes. So screenplay is actually written by uh, his daughter. Actually, the original story is actually written by uh, Riho Okawa. But the screenplay, the detailed screenplay, is written by his daughter, Sayaka Okawa. So I'm, I joined in as one of the producers for this film as well. So, right. so and, and you're here in the States because you're maybe one of the best people to bring it to this country. <laughs> because I can speak to Right. And we lost you again. Um, so I'll just wait. All right. All right. Um, mm. I, I haven't had this problem before. Mm, interesting, yeah. because this network is pretty good too here. You know, it's a spectrum, so. Yeah, I don't understand why. I haven't had, had it here, so. So uh, you can come back starting with, I speak. You were going to say, I speak. So, oh, so I guess uh, the reason why I'm here is because I speak uh, the best English in the, in the team. And so we established the company called HS Productions last year. And we've been, uh, you know, introducing a lot of movies from Japan through this channel because it's kind of important, you know, bring the culture back to U.S. as well. Not just always, you know, uh, importing the culture from U.S. But I just thought, as as a Japanese, my mission is also to bring out the good goodness of Japan as well to the world. So, right, U.S. can make a window point for us. I well, this point. this film has a lot of goodness in it. Mm -hmm. um, the the heroine. Uh, the, the woman, the protagonist, uh, is a, a young woman who works mm -hmm. in a coffee shop, basically. Yeah. But it's a very elegant, beautiful Japanese shop, uh -huh. and they make special coffee that's yes. very spiritually made. Yes, and then, <laughs> and people come in with problems, and yes. she is clairvoyant, and she yeah. can see, like right away at the beginning, some young man was robbed carrying mm -hmm. a lot of money from his yep. work to the bank and she could actually see who did it and where to mm -hmm. find him <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and uh and there are many times in the in the film where she's presented with situations where she has to visualize mm -hmm. different things yeah uh, yep in including um what are those fish called um Skyfish. 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 That a little girl was, yeah. was hit on yeah. the cheek mm -hmm. and, um, and yeah. she um, didn't know what hurt her. And it was. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I looked on the internet and found out, yeah, there are people who actually have films showing skyfish in them. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So there really is such a thing. Yeah. There uh, is, yeah. Just like orbs, you know, very few mm -hmm. people have heard of orbs. Yeah. But there's so much evidence of them, and I've seen it yeah. in very, very profound ways. Mm -hmm. And we don't know what they are, nor do yep. we know what skyfish mm -hmm. are. 
Yeah. But it's other things happening in our That's right. reality that that um, right. are only caught on film. Reality in this world that we're living right. in, right? right. Definitely. So, so um, the film really has also a lot of, of, of dark situations that mm -hmm. she sheds light on. Yes. So it's really, that's why it's called The Exorcist, because... Yeah, the, the real exorcist, yeah, the real exorcist. Oh, the, I'm sorry, the yeah. real exorcist. And, and it's, um, it's because she um, can see uh, the dark energies at play. Mm -hmm. Yes. And helps produce the light to move them forward. That's right. That's right. And it's beautiful. I, I, years ago, in 1974, I was in, north, uh, in northern Thailand, of mm -hmm. Chiang Mai, and I met a man who was from a famous uh, family of exorcists. Wow. The Morse family. Mm -hmm. And at that point, um, Myanmar was called Burma. And he and his family had spent 20 years living in the jungles of Burma, mm -hmm. going from village to village, exercising demons. Wow. And they would fight oh. them. Uh -huh. and, and, and they were Christians, and, and they would perform Christian ceremonies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the demons would leave. Wow. And, um, and the stories he had about it were amazing. You know, I was really convinced, you know, that that these that there see. are dark forces. Then, mm -hmm. and when I started my spiritual practice, I studied with some teachers who were really into uh, being spiritual. Means you have to be an exorcist. You have to really mm -hmm. always be a warrior against the dark. Yeah, the dark right. Is always attacking. Yes. And, yeah. and it frightened me. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I don't want to be spiritual anymore. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yes. I really yeah. don't. Or over that one step, right? Yeah, step yeah, further. It's like, it's like, it's too scary. I, I, I don't see myself as this, you know, soldier, this giant mm -hmm. warrior who's, mm -hmm. who's fighting evil all the time. So I decided that I would really live as a um, as a light bearer and mm. bring light and always uh, work with the light mm -hmm. not expect myself to have to go to war about it right and so I've had a very good life that way so mm -hmm. I make that made that choice mm -hmm. uh, doesn't mean that there aren't dark forces yeah because I've met many, many healers who think that that's their job is to get rid of mm. energy. Mm -hmm. I see. And, and it's not like these things don't exist, but it's it, it's to me it's it's just a, a metaphor mm -hmm. of reality. You know, yep. these are symbols of of dark versus light. Sure, that sure. We give form to. Yep. And intelligence too, uh, mm -hmm. because the more that our brain is thinking that way, or and in many cases disturbed, there'll be a dark intelligence that can mm -hmm. come in contact with it. Yes, I agree. Right. Yeah, right. And so in this film, uh, the, the woman is what's her name? Sayuri. 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 Yes. Now she's, yeah, so she's um, very um, beautiful and very wonderful spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yet um, she stands up to these dark forces, you know. Yes. You don't feel afraid for her at all. Yep. And, and you really understand that she is working, as she says in the film, she's working with God. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, um, and she, you know, devotes herself to serving, you know, the, the light. Right, so right. It's called the light. Yeah. And, and so I, I was fascinated with how confident she is mm -hmm. in knowing what to do and helping people mm -hmm. overcome their own darknesses. Yep, yep. And so that's one of the, the beautiful aspects of this film. Mm -hmm. that yes. We're, we're everybody is faced with some darkness. We yes. all, 
Mm -hmm. uh, I learned this in, in, in 1975. I took a workshop with hundreds of people mm -hmm. and, who I didn't know. And it became obvious that all of these hundreds of people who looked very normal, all were insecure in one form or another. Oh. Everybody has fears. Everybody feels inadequate in one way mm -hmm. or another. And, and those who don't are kidding themselves. Um, you know, there are, certain, there are certainly a lot of people who want to live in denial. Mm -hmm. But we all have ways that we uh, are limited. And, and many people um, are more influenced by their limitations than others. Mm -hmm. Right. And right. That, that can create real darkness for some people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And so there are a lot of lessons in this film about, yes, sir. Yep. you know, how to believe in yourself and how to mm -hmm. be true to your own light mm -hmm. and, uh, and not succumb to negativity, but also to see that there's so many loving people around who can yes. support each other. Yes. That's why it's called The, the Real Exorcist. It's not a horror movie. If you people think it's Exorcist, they might think it's a horror, a scary movie. But reality, uh, this is a real Exorcist because there's a there's a this, there's an answer to it. Now, in usually when you see a horror movie, you just the excitement is to get scared. You know, yeah, I don't like horror movie. movies. But this is not a horror. It's it's more like a, it's supernatural, a little bit scary, but not much. But the main essence of this movie is that you get to, to learn something from these incidents that she solves. So there's an answer to it. Then, I don't know, some people believe in ghosts and spirits, some people don't. It's okay if you don't, you can put it as a negative energy and positive energy, but it's still, right. you get to learn like, oh, this is how I should have, how I should think, you know, to become more positive. You know? And let's call it metaphors. These are metaphors, dark, yeah. metaphors of darkness. And you know, but I think a lot of our audience will understand that yeah. that there are all kinds of energies in in yeah. our reality, in the and, and we don't have to be fearful and live fearfully uh, right. when we're living with light. Mm -hmm. Yes, you there's know. always something unseen that is actually uh, you know have a strong impact or influence in your life. But you have to kind of, it's a metaphor, but you have to understand that these things are the ones that's influencing you in your life. That's the energy that is going to cause you, you know, to, to act in certain ways or have a reality. So this is just, uh, there's a lot of things that's going on behind the scene where you cannot see in right. reality. Yeah. And we have to appreciate that one of the purposes of life is to solve problems. Uh, yes, and not to have no problems, but to right, right. to face them and solve them mm -hmm. in, in very unique ways. And yes. um, and I I work intuitively, so I hear things and know things that mm -hmm. people don't. Mm -hmm. so there are a lot of what's called supernatural things that I'm very aware of mm -hmm. and um, and understand how clear they are because yep. like just like in the movie with her clairvoyance i'm clairaudient and not clairvoyant mm -hmm. you can see things that no one else could know right and and solve problems because she can understand things uh with her clairvoyant clairvoyant mm -hmm. but um i can understand things with my clairaudience mm -hmm. my mm -hmm. Yeah. And have solved a lot of problems. Yeah. Know things that uh, there's no reason why I should know them, but I do because of mm -hmm. my intuition. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so I understand, how, and I, I'm also friendly with a number of people who mm -hmm. are great yep. their yeah. audience and yeah. and can see things that mm -hmm. uh, I'm impressed about. Yeah. You know what's great? I think about the people who has a power is that. You know, usually if you have like, a, you know, psychic power or clairvoyant power, you would think you want to use it for yourself because it's an advantage for yourself. But superheroes don't do that. You, you know what I mean? Right. They will use it for other people, just like Sayuri and yourself. They use it for other people's happiness and, and to give love and to, to bring better life for others, but not to yourself. And that is, I think, the most important message this movie is trying to tell you. 
because you don't have to have a supernatural power in order to be a person like that. Right. You, know what I mean? you just be, like, be helpful. Yeah, be helpful. Right. So if everybody starts to be like that and be more grateful and have gratitude and appreciation for the world and to what we be given, I think the world can be a little better person where we are today, right now, especially in like 2020. Well, one of my teachings is that yeah. intuition for yourself doesn't work that well. Yeah, right. Because our egos get in the way. That's right, ego. They distort the truth. Definitely. It's going to distort the truth. That's so true. Yes. Yeah. When I, I need things for myself, I'll ask mm -hmm. other intuitives to intuit for me. Right. <laughs> right. But you, you wouldn't do it for yourself. That right. is great. Right. Yes. A lot of people, I've met a lot of people who just want to be intuitive for themselves. Mm -hmm. And um, it's interesting how there are many people who are very narcissistic and, right. and really uh, aren't interested in welfare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, if you get too much ego, I mean, self, you know, self-centered, I don't know. Sometimes you, you kind of lost, lose the path, you right. know, the track path. So this you movie, to walk towards, walk towards the yeah this you know that's why I, I love this movie because it, the the energy is so positive mm -hmm. and yes and it's it's so elegantly um directed mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. it's a beautiful experience to to watch this movie mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and then for those of us who are more spiritually oriented it mm -hmm. satisfies a lot of our own interests <laughs> yeah 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 you know, appeal to a lot of different, you know, audiences, I think. Yes. Yeah, yes. Mm. And so, it, because it's, because it's a beautiful film, and the story makes sense uh, about mm -hmm. all the different problems people have. Yeah, and yes. And how they're solved are yep. problems that many people have. Mm -hmm. Yes, like there's a suicide issue, there's a miscarriage issue, there's a poltergeist issue. Is right. the wandering spirits. So these things probably happen to a lot of us, you know, uh, surrounding us, our environment. And so hopefully that would give each one of us a hint to how to overcome it. Because some of the issues are pretty, like suicide is, is pretty, is a heavy topic if you want to talk about it. We can talk forever about suicide, right? But right. And then there's a beautiful part where this one, a young woman committed suicide mm -hmm. and uh, and um, our uh, heroine helps her understand yes um, what she did wrong yes yes and so she could feel like all right I'm sorry I made this mistake but in my mm -hmm. next life I'll do better I'll be better and she goes back to heaven yes right and and that's part of it is that a lot of the people a lot of the dark all the dark energies in this film get moved on to uh, yes it's place. right up to heaven back to heaven back to heaven so yeah. people feel the same way oh that's how i can you know change my way of thinking and things like that so hopefully that'll become like a light for for a lot of people to watch it so. right there are a lot of truths about life in this film a lot of mm -hmm. them um it's it's you know it's so understandable mm -hmm. and, uh, and what what we can learn from it it's, yes, it's beautiful, and mm -hmm. I felt greatly enhanced. Not, it's not like these lessons are, are lessons we've never heard before. Right, it's just mm -hmm. beautiful to see them activated in this form. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Especially like nowadays, when we made this film, of course, it was more than a year ago, so we never expected, you know, the Corona pandemic and things like that. Uh, this thing to happen in this world nowadays. But I think it kind of reminds me now, you know, looking back to this film, it reminds me that I think there's a lesson, you know, God and universe, whatever we want to call this higher consciousness. I think he or she is trying to, to like, teach us something, the oneness. Everything's what, in divine order. You know, we're missing something in this world, I think. Well, that's right. And, and the whole purpose, so I think, of all of this is you know i say the phoenix will rise from mm -hmm. the ashes of this we just yeah. don't know how deep the ashes are going to be right so, 
Right. Like, right. Very right. deep and last long. But, then, deep, but yeah. the Phoenix, you know, there, there will be a rebirth. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, there will. And many lessons learned from this. Yeah. yeah. What's really important. Mm -hmm. and so a lot of people can't see beyond the limitations. Yeah. To have a life that can be fulfilling. Mm -hmm. But we will be beyond this limitation. Yes. 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 And we know better because of it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hopefully so, we'll do this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the real exorcist is a film that can help people just feel better about goodwill, about mm -hmm. um, love and, and mutual support and, mm -hmm. and appreciating each other. In, in right really deep ways mm -hmm. yes. being honest and also be diligent you know work hard every day step by step and be yeah. brave be brave also there's a you lot of bravery fight. in this that yes. I, I really appreciate it yes you have to fight for the good you know yeah right <laughs> so yeah so um when, when will this be around this film uh we're targeting august 7th in theaters uh, in the u.s but at this point, we're not sure, you know, where it's going to be open. So uh, we'll be trying New York, LA, Orange Country, San Francisco, Florida, Hawaii, Chicago, yeah. Atlanta. Eventually, but, it'll be streaming also, right? Yes, there's VOD is going to be coming up in September 1st. We oh. kind of made it a little earlier. So if in case theaters does not open in the market as much as we expected, we can always shift our strategy to VOD so people can watch VOD. And also, we're going to have a DVD as well from September 1st. So Good. they can go to iTunes I'm, and on and watch this movie. I'm excited yeah. about this opportunity mm -hmm. because it was such a pleasure to um, be in this journey of the film. Mm -hmm. So and did you want the voiceover version or the subtitle version? Subtitle. We also have voiceover, so a lot of American okay. audience might not want to read the subtitle, so we have a voiceover as okay. well. Okay, so. well, I, I, I don't know what that would sound like because I loved the, yes. the Japanese language being used. Of course. Of course. I didn't you understand a word of it, but the yeah. mannerisms and the way the sure. words were expressed sure. were very meaningful. Because you appreciate a lot of different, you know, things. But for some people, it might be a little bit hard, so to clear that hard out, to enjoy the message, we, we also made a voiceover. And it came out very well, so I think uh, some people will also have a, will enjoy it. They get to choose. Good. Yes. Wonderful. So, mm -hmm. um, Yoichi Utebi, thank you so mm -hmm. much for being thank here. You so energy Stu. I was talking with you about this. Thank you so much. And this is Peter Roth, your host of Energy Stew at prm.fm. I can be reached at heartriver, H-E-A-R-T, river.org. I'd love to hear from you, and thanks so much for listening.